Um, okay, well, Rob, a little bit about yourself, and then we can finish off with the lovely Eliza. Totally. Yeah. Uh, well, I started my career, whatever we want to call this, uh, as a yeah, skateboard. Exactly. Skateboard filmer and photographer. I quickly realized that makes no money. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. unfortunately, like I think all the Canadian skateboard magazines have folded. Um, oh, I think there's oh, only man. one magazine left in the states, Thrasher. Wow. Uh, so it's just it's really changed. Uh, yeah, and I feel like it was really big. Yeah, and I went through film school, got my film degree, but then same thing like I was saying earlier, I literally just like I got out and I was like, now what? And I went yeah. and worked at Grouse mm -hmm. as a lifty because oh, really? I wanted a free snowboard pass. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, and then I got uh, actually still one of the best jobs I've ever had as a camera operator for the Olympics, uh, 2010 Olympics. Oh, wow. I did not know that. No, yeah. That's cool. uh, and. Oh yeah, of course, because you were on the mountain and like... Uh, zero percent. Oh, so oh. like, it actually goes, so I was doing, I was working at Grouse and I was doing stage hand work for the Commodore. Oh, um, okay. So backstage, I would help set up the bands um, before the show. So the shift usually started at noon, and then we'd work till four, do sound test, and then I'd have a break until like 1 a.m. where I'd tear down from like 1 a.m. till... So I get to watch the show if I wanted yeah. or yeah. whatever. I met some super cool people also working at Grouse. Um, but the Commodore, didn't, like, it wasn't like a full-time hired by Commodore, they had a staffing company. Okay. So anytime they needed a um, stagehand or, and then they eventually had a camera program where they had a camera operator, which I filmed uh, like a metric music video. <laughs> and then they never hired any other camera people again. Like I think it was just too expensive. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you go to the Commodore, you'll see cameras like up in the ceiling, their HVX 200s. and. They've been used once for like, oh, a metric really? music video that I filmed. Oh, wow. Um, but that staffing solution company was one of the companies to help staff the Olympics. Oh. So they put a call out. I got like an email or something, however it worked. I got a, an email saying like, oh, like, do you want to do um, some stuff for the Olympics? These are the positions. And I was like, oh, I'd love to be a camera operator. That's my dream. And they looked at my resume. They were like, oh, you're only... 19 or something, uh, probably 20, and they were like, how about you go for like a cable wrangling job? So a cable yeah. wrangling job is like, I follow a yeah, camera operator support, yeah. and hold oh, his cable. Wow. That's um, good. And I was like, I hear you. I don't know what I said, but I was like, I would, and this is so much more ballsy than I normally am, but I was, like, <laughs> I was like, can I just interview for the camera operating job? And if you, don't, if you still don't think it's going to work, hire me as a cable regular. Like, you, you can't mess up being cable. Oh, you probably could mess up being a cable regular. Yeah. But, like, just let me interview. And they're like, okay, sure. And so I literally remember the morning of um, the interview, I had, like, two outfits in my hand. It was like, do I wear a suit and tie? Or do I wear all black with, like, a black jacket? Yeah. Um, I was okay. like, you got to dress up for an interview, right? And I was like... But I would never wear a suit and tie, like, as a stagehand or, like, yeah. behind the scenes. You wear, like, like, not hoodies, but, like, black everything. Yeah, so you, you don't, you, you want to be inconspicuous. Yeah. Um, and I went for, I went with my gut and went with the, uh, just the all black, yeah. like, sweater, yeah. jeans, and boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I went in and it was this board of people and I showed my demo reel, which I made in school which had things like skateboarding and action sports, which I was passionate oh, yeah. about. And they were like, excellent, like stuff. And like, they're like, first off, we want to thank you so much for dressing for the job. Everyone else came in a suit and tie. Oh, wow. And I was like, dang. Yes! <laughs> I feel my intuition's often wrong, but that one like, <laughs> really Yo, it. that's like, like for me, I would say like, that's like sales, like you're selling. Yeah, oh, you're selling I was, yourself. I was yeah. so nervous. And then they were like, and this was like on like a DVD and they had like a TV, like it's totally different than it would be today. Wow. But like, um, and then they're like, did you get, did you get the copyrights for the music for your demo reel? And I was honest. I was like, no. no. I was like, I'm like fresh student. I straight up stole that music. I didn't know if I said it that way, but, and they were like, thanks for being honest. We'll call you. I was like, ah. <laughs> and I called and I got the second highest 
position. Oh, wow. uh, so Ooh. the highest position was in-house for this company. So my stuff wasn't broadcasted on television. Okay. I was the in-house guy. So you see my stuff on the Jumbotron. Okay. Uh, so the first position was the hockey. And I didn't get the ho hockey camera. But I was like, that would have been sick. Yeah. And the second position was um, speed skating. Oh, which wow. is like, I was like, I don't know, speed skating is boring, whatever. But it was up there at Richmond Oval, new one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, speed skating is awesome. Yeah. Really? Like, I had so much fun. I learned so much. And uh, they got like some speed skating fans out there. And there was like an upset with Canada versus oh, like wow. the Netherlands. And Canada ended up getting gold. Um, this is totally all off topic, but like it was a really good time in my life. But uh, during one of the uh, rehearsals we did, so like most of the nights they did a medal ceremony at the Olympic Oval, and they're like, we need stand-ins, and they're like, Rob, go stand in. So I stood on the gold podium, yeah! and they, they put Trendyac on the billboard, and like for a second I had won gold. It was yeah, and speed skating. Yeah, 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 I got a big enough butt. <laughs> But like, uh, so like, that and like, felt so cool. It was like sixteen-hour days or twelve-hour yeah. days for sixteen days or something, and then I'd go to Granville Strip and just like, not party like, but I was like out yeah. there partying. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the Olympics was like super special, but then that ended, and I was like, so it was no, twenty ten. Well. I was like, I'm not going back to Grouse. Like, cannot do that. So I ended up getting a job at a set construction company. So we would build film sets. So I was like, this is my like way in the industry. This is what I want to do. I want to be on set. I want to be a behind camera, but I'm doing sets. So I'm like, I'll be able to like rub shoulders with the right people. But yeah. like we would build the set off site in Burnaby mm -hmm. and then go to wherever the set was being done, set it up the day before it leave. They would do all the production. And then I could come back and tear it down, bring it to the dump. And you're like, and I, I actually like liked a lot of the job. Uh, their managing um, style, I, I learned like a lot what not to do. Uh -huh. um, it was very soul sucking in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. But it was like good money. And then I met Eliza in October 2010. So I guess just right after the Olympics. My timelines must be off because I worked at that set place for almost five years. So it must have been like Grouse and that set place right. at the same time. Whatever. Um, I was like, babe, like, this is bad, like, we're still dating at this point, and so, I don't know even what you said, but, like, one day, something happened, and I went in at 6 a.m., and I got my tools, and I was like, I'm done, and I just walked really? out, like, not two weeks notice, like, they pushed me over the edge, they broke me, Yeah. and I went back, I went to Eliza's place, and... I was like, babe, that's it. I'm done. I quit. She was like, okay, like, why are you over at 6 a.m.? And like, whatever. I was like, so, I, mean, I think we're engaged at this point. Because I was like, so, like, we're going to have to, like, push the wedding. Because I have no money. I just quit my job. And she was like, go get your job. <laughs> and, and she literally made me phone my boss. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I was emotional. Seriously? And he took me back. Wow. He took me back. Um... <laughs> So that had to be in the spring, and I kept working, and then, uh, well, so we got so we got engaged, and I told him I was like, I'm getting married August 12th, August 11th. <laughs> yeah, like, I got married August 11th. My dad's birthday is August 12th, 2012. August 11th, 2012, and I was like, I'm taking a week off. I go and have family in town. We're getting married. And they're like, oh, well, we can't really like promise that. I was like, well, you have nine months. I'm not going to be there for that one week. Mm -hmm. and like, that's what I'm doing. And uh, so coming up to my wedding or my time off that I told them in December uh, and they were like, you can't take it or you're going to be fired. I'm like, great. See ya. And then, so I went to my wedding and then came back. Like, they didn't really fire me, but they didn't, like, say... Same, so I came yeah. back after, you know, my lot of time, and they gave my laborer my job, but no one talked to me. I signed oh, wow. in, I did everything, and everyone's avoiding me. It was the weirdest thing. And then um, we had this one job where we worked 32 hours in a row. Oh, like, wow. so we were into double time. We were wow. going crazy. And... 
they were just such jerks about like, they're like, oh, you're slacking. I'm like, I've been awake for 24 hours. Like, you should just like applaud me for like, <laughs> whatever. And then, but at this point, so we were living together and I was like, wow, this job's like killing you. You have to quit. And I was like, you yeah. can't quit. Because I didn't realize when we weren't like, before we were living together, I didn't, I knew it was bad, but I was like, what else? Yeah are you going to do? You want to be in this industry. Like, I didn't know how bad yeah, it was. I did, I did, and I would still love to be in the film industry, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then, what, but once Rob moved in, and I was like, oh, this job is actually killing you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, um, we ended up going on our honeymoon two months later. We went to Europe, and in Europe, she's just like, just, we're on the, like, I clearly remember we're on the southern beaches of Spain. It was kind of like, misty out it's kind of magical and she's like just quit just don't go back and just you like photography right be a photographer and I was like you can't just you can't just be a, be a photographer, a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like you can't just I don't you can't just start a business and she's like yeah you can and she's like do like weddings do headshots and I was like but like I have no clients like you don't see how this works like now that we're married I need a job and she's like no you don't just be a photographer and I was like and she's like here give me your camera or she's like take photos of me and direct me and I've never directed anyone like I'm like oh, doing yeah. skateboarding and like yeah. that oh, kind yeah. of thing and so she, they're just kind of doing it and then you're just like mm-hmm. shooting she's like t- direct me and she's on the beach and she's like take photos of me I'm like it feels <laughs> weird like it felt and she's like give me the camera she took the camera she took the camera and she's never done photography and she was like put your head here, put your arm here, like, do this. And she took, like, a rad headshot on me. And I was like, oh. she's like, now do that on me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was so timid. But we just decided, like, we're going to do it. And we did, we were fairly broke in our first year of marriage. And so we... Correction. We, we were so, so <laughs> broke in our first year of marriage. Yeah, so we, um, we did a lot of, like, overnight buses instead of, like, flying places um so just on the buses we like made a company uh eliza was a couple years into her career so still like getting busier but still had like lots of room to grow and stuff so um wait have you started a salon but no No, i was just uh i was um yeah i was just renting a chair i was maybe like two two or three years Mm -hmm. two years into doing hair because i graduated hair school and in like the summer of yep. 2009 so I'd only been a hairstylist for maybe about two years oh, wow. so still getting like much busier you know I th- maybe your dad was helping you out here and there or whatever um so we decided to uh create a company where I did like family and wedding photos headshots and Eliza could do the hair and then when we got back we're like we're oh, I'll put oh. you through makeup school so Eliza mm-hmm. was the hairstylist makeup artist okay. and then I was the photographer so, so we, we called smart. ourselves Trendy Creative. I remember that. You do? Yeah, okay. I remember Trendy Creative. We trendy That's so cool. Yeah. 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 And it was awesome. It. Literally from, well, probably a hotel room because we didn't have data in Europe at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, we emailed our friend and we're like, hey, like you build websites, right? And make logos. Like we're starting a company and we want to call it Trendy Creative. She's like on it. And then we came back, like it did the whole honeymoon, came back and she's like, here's your logo. Actually, we might've got our logo in Europe. Yeah. Uh, she sent us logo. We're like, we love it. And it was like, like scissors and a camera. Yeah, and I don't think that's where like this like my yeah. yeah, 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 like yeah. came from. Was like, yeah, from the and I, I, I have the camera up here. Yeah. Um, I remember that. I think I still have like a business card from that somewhere totally. kicking around. Yeah, and then so what it did it was like, well, her I think her quote was like for a website and a logo. I think uh-huh. it was twenty five hundred dollars. I think. And we were like, whoa. We were like, like, that's an astronomical yeah. amount. I was like, yeah. she's totally worth it. But we knew, yeah, we knew she was worth it. But then also, why was that on a logo? Like, think about it now. You're like, that's actually really cheap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, that's a good price. price. Oh, my God. Like, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. But when, like, but when Back then. I was researching night shifts at Tim Hortons because I was like, how are we going to, to pay, pay to live yeah. $2,500? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. we don't have $2,500. Yeah. So I took photos all throughout the, the, trip, the Europe trip, mm-hmm. and I made a photo book. And I contacted this new company. They were, oh, I want to say De- from Denver. They were also husband and wife, and they were making these really cool photo books. They're a huge company now called mm-hmm. Ar- Artifact Uprising. I don't know if you heard of them. I've, I've heard it, yeah. They're great. I looked at 
So I, I was like, hey, this is who I am. Like, your books are like, we, they have these like Instagram books. They're square. Mm -hmm. I think they were probably like $16 each. I was like, what if I order like 25 or 50? And I was like, could I get like a discount? And they were like, yeah, like, sure. Uh, so I think my cost ended up being like $9 or $12 per book or something. Mm -hmm. And then I did like a Facebook post. I was like, hey, like friends and family, I want to start a company. I need to pay for the logo, the business cards and uh, the website. Uh, I need to raise like some money. My goal is to sell 25 of these books from my Europe trip. And I ended up selling 62. Wow. And I sold them for 25. So whatever $25 times 62 mm -hmm. is. Um, is what, yeah. I don't no, know. I don't do math. But we pretty much we pretty much like paid for it. Yeah, by which, selling these photo books. Yeah. And so I still oh, have oh one. Gosh, I have one in my so office. Smart. And oh, then in so the smart. book I put the business cards, one of Eliza's, wow. one of mine. And we were trying to be creative. And wow. I had never heard this story. Yeah. yeah. That is and so, so cool. It was really like it sounds to me it sounds magical, but like on the south uh, end of Spain on the beaches is like like something clicked yeah. like yeah. you can just be a photographer yeah. like just do it like just call the government just yeah. ask like yeah. you can be a photographer and i was like like literally that thought had never occurred For like sure. you got a job yeah. somewhere you did this yeah. you didn't just be a photographer so um that the south of spain like eliza really really yeah. flipped that switch because i did not have that upbringing of like you can do it mm -hmm. yeah. um and then, so I did get in kind of weddings and families and, and that kind of thing, but quickly realized like weddings are not my, my jam. And no I started doing some fitness stuff and that was like, oh, this is kind of like skateboarding. It can be a little more edgy. And oh, so yeah. then Trendy Creative, the brand kind of got like old. It didn't fit. We kind of yeah. grew it up. Yeah, I yeah. grew it. Yeah. It was very kind of Pinteresty and very um, yeah. style me pretty, which is like a wedding blog. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, 2015, um, I'll let Eliza talk more about it, but we opened the first salon. Okay. And uh, so my career like, wasn't like full, full time. Anytime, like if I didn't work 40 hours a week, like say I worked 30, I'd watch 10 hours of courses and like learn and teach myself. But right. we opened the salon, so I would every day like help open the salon and do laundry and do Costco runs and do so I was like I am 50% owner of the salon um but I had more time and then my career just really started like going I was like working 60 hours a week sometimes like 80 hours a week and yeah. I just straight up had to like bounce from the salon yeah uh so going uh, into this year like we have opened two more salons since then and my focus is really like, I really want to get back to the salon, but I have to figure out how to monetize my photography passion and my video passion yeah. and start creating yeah. content for ourselves and how to monetize that. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be like a new learning curve for me, which I'm, I'm super stoked on. Yeah. Um, but also still a little scared because I was like making, like I was paying all, pretty much all of our personal bills. Mm -hmm. right. uh, yeah. And then my office and kind of my business right. stuff. Yeah. And then Eliza really uh, helped us pay off debt and uh, build up the businesses kind of with her income. That's kind of how we, I kind of made sure our mortgage was covered and, right. and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty good. How, how, yeah. we, how we split that. So the, going in this year, I'm like, my goals are significantly less because it was like, I was like, oh, like I want to make a hundred grand or, you know, like it kind of went up, like I made 40 and then I made 45, 60. Yeah. So like I'm kind of making like those kind of numbers, like 70 ish this year. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm like, my goal is kind of like 30. Because I really need to cut my time. So, yeah, like make, so you can really focus. Make, yeah. like, I haven't actually crunched the numbers, but like, let's say make 30 ish this year with photography, which yeah. feels so backwards. And yeah. I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm drowning because I'm like, my normal goal was like, I knew my clients, yeah. I knew, but yeah. now I'm like, I don't know, and I'm making something up. And I have to like learn how to like, make these websites and I wanted to start doing Facebook ads and so doing a lot of time I'll spend like eight hours at the office learning yeah. and watching YouTube videos or whatever and I, I feel like it's a waste of time because I'm not like billing people yeah yeah um so I'm a little floundery right now but uh I'm excited for kinda, yeah kind of yeah. getting more full-time Martel yeah um 
So that's, what, that's kind of where I am. But it's been so nice. Like, I miss the salon. Like, yeah. Eliza's like, oh, we need this. I'm like, got it. Like, I, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my career past and wow. present. Yeah. We're, we're, we're just looking at the, the, the trying to create a book. I went and found it. Camera died. But we're back. We're back. And I found, I found the book. It's a little waterlogged. Read, read the yeah. quote. What did I say? So, I take photos because I catch glimpses of heaven, heaven in the earthly landscape. The success of my photography is that it enables others to see the glimpses too. That's really good. So, uh, uh, like, it's, it's, it's a take on, I'm just making sure everything, uh, recording, recording. It's a take on a, my, one of my favorite C.S. Lewis quotes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, I'm not the poet I alluded to be, but. Right. <laughs> It's so funny because it's the book looks so tiny. No, it, no, it's tiny. It's like it's an like, Instagram book. That's yeah, what they're right. meant for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then we, look, we, like... we put in like a little like note to people Wait. buying it, being okay. like. Let me say, if you're holding this book in your hands, it means that in some way, shape, or form, you have been integral support to us. You saw the vision and believed in us, and for that, we are enormously grateful. By purchasing the trendy creative photo book, you helped us print business cards design a logo, and build a website. You did that. You did that. Not because of, not us, because of you. We, uh, we get to keep creating, doing what we love every day. So thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, love Rob and Liza Trendy. That's so cute. You're so, so smart. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. such a good that's way. That's so cute. It's like literally just crowdfunding. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome. You know, it's so Can funny because like, like such like this the oh yeah i remember this logo like yeah so similar to what like what i also had as like because when i was like kind of back in school and did photography and all that like that was like my thing it was like i want people to see this beauty that i'm like capturing yeah. as well yeah uh, and that I was, was like weird. it's so interesting so that was like that like blows my mind that that was such a similar kind of thing anyways awesome yeah so i guess there's some other trip like i see some vancouver stuff i see some hong kong yeah. do you go into the hong kong um is this all your pictures yeah yeah this These is definitely insane. that's eliza when she's finished training wow wow yeah. i remember <laughs> that's how i remember meeting eliza <laughs> <laughs> it was literally, and, oh, like she and was then, so ripped. Then she opened the business. <laughs> yeah, it was like no more, no more. Um, I remember meeting. I, I, I know I met you previously. Apparently, I met you at my brother's wedding. I don't no, I that. just saw you. You there. just saw me. You okay. did not. Meet. She did not approach me. Right. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> "Who is that?" Um, I remember my first time. I feel like I met you okay. was I'm when that. you worked at, or when, no, when I worked yeah, at, okay. um, Wonder. is it? Oh, sorry. Anyway, continue. Um, what I remember when I remember meeting Eliza was when she was like super ripped uh -huh. and you came to the store that I worked at. I worked at the Archetype. Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. forgot about and that. Cheryl came in with you and Rob and um, I just remember like meeting you or whatever and I was like, well, she's like jacked. <laughs> <laughs> and then you bought this like crazy dress. I did. The pow, it was like pow, pow, pow. pow, pow. pow. Yeah. Oh, I like, love that dress. Yeah. It was, it was super cute. It looks great on you. So on, on, on a little side note, this is the photo Eliza took of me when she grabbed the camera oh, oh, the cell yeah. beach, and then this is what this I ended up so getting cute. her. Like, you're so yeah, it's very, like, so young. Yeah, it's very Little babies. So. Cute. This is our, uh, I still have that shirt, that's great. It doesn't fit as well. Nothing fits anymore. No, it's just, it's funny to see the book because it just like, Looking back now, it's like, oh, that's so adorable and so <laughs> so quaint and like, and like, like not jaded, so cute, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, not jaded. We're so, like, we're so like, yeah, like wide-eyed and like we, we can take over the world. And yeah. like, I look at it now, I'm like, oh, that's so adorable. I feel like two kids made a project and was like, want to buy my chocolate bars? But, yeah. yeah. yeah.